All right. Pastor Thomas is here. Pastor Thomas, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Thomas. 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 Thank you. Oh, oh. Thank you, Pastor Thomas. I love you. We love you. I love you so much. Thank y'all so much for doing that. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know. It's a little late, but thank y'all so much. Y'all don't know how much you all mean to me. I mean all of you. And even those who I've never met, our brother down in Florida, I'm grateful for him, and I'm grateful for all those who have been a part of this 200 days. Some people count as 200 days. Maybe this was a rough 200 days, but I believe that because we've been the Word of God, this 200 days has been a burden. It's been lightened off for us as opposed to a burden to us. And so I love all of y'all. On the Zoom line, I love all of y'all. On the phone line, I'm just grateful that God has sent me to such a place as the St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church and family, and it's allowed me to pastor such a group of people. I, that was very, very sweet. I appreciate that. I made my, Made my whole week. The week is made now. I'm so pleased with you today. And thank you, Sister Bad and Reverend Sisters, for kicking this off tonight. 200 nights. We have celebrated this program, studied, and walked in the Word of God. And, again, I am grateful. I was praying before class. I'm grateful, for, first of all, for God's instruction for us to do it. Then I'm grateful for God providing the Word for myself, Reverend McKinstry, uh, and Minister McClady, Mr. Parker, Minister Gurley, Reverend Stanley, um, and, and Minister Edwards, all who have participated uh, in this effort. And I'm also grateful. Let me say this, too. I'm grateful for the Minister, Reverend Davis, who, and I will be very honest, who has not participated, but has been a, a rock of this operation. Because one of the things, and i got to say this, as I uh, started pastoring, Reverend Davis um, you know, shared with me, uh, the necessity of faithfulness and work, faithfulness and doing work. Not that God doesn't. I think Minister uh, Deacon Ellis spoke some of this today. God doesn't um, bless our. He's not impressed by efforts, but he is by our effort. It's not like, in other words, God is not focused on the outcome. He's focused on our efforts and doing His will. And so, in any day that I might have considered saying, "Oh, you know, we'll just stop now," God's instruction in remembering what Reverend Davis had said my first year, 2004, as pastor. Uh, cause us to continue to carry on. So I'm grateful that we have done this together. We have done this together. We have done this together. God has kept us. And as I look at this time frame, God has provided for us. God has 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 sustained us. We're going to talk about that tonight, too. And, and I thank God for his guidance. I thank God for his leadership in terms of leading us to where he wants us to be. I thank God for his word that gives us strength, his Holy Spirit that renews and revives us. And I thank God for marrying us together, the congregation of believers. And so I believe without a doubt that I have not seen and ears have not heard what God is going to do for us as a result of our faithfulness in this season. I believe that. I believe that when we come out um, and, and whenever God calls us back, and we're praying about that now, whenever God brings us back together, I believe that we're going to have a wonderful, and I'm praying the whole body of Christ, but, but I believe that God's going to do something special on that corner of Venetian and Sandtown, and he's going to do something so that others would know about him, about God, um, our our the Creator, and God our Father. So I'm I'm happy tonight. I'm very excited tonight uh, that we have come this far, and it's by God's grace, um, and and through by His grace toward us, and giving us the faith to continue on this journey. I want to take a special hat off to all of those who made every night. I want to take a hat off to all those who made most nights. I want to take all the hats off here, all of who's made some nights, and I want to take hats off to all y'all who made any night. And now I'm going to take a hat off to those who about to get started. There's some people, I believe that there's going to be a renewal of our energy um, in going forward in these next days um, because I believe that more and more we're seeing what God is capable of doing, and we see that God's power is unmatched. And so that's what I believe is about to happen. So I'm grateful to all that God is doing. If you are <clears throat> got your Bibles, I know you do. We'll be on Bible study. Now, let's go to the book of uh, Genesis again tonight. We have shared and we have celebrated and we have um, sojourned in the work of God these last few days, uh, especially as it pertains to um, um, the names of God. And just for clarity's sake, I want to talk about why that's important to us. It's important for us to know the names of not God, not just for the, not just for the information. Put it like that. Not just for the information. But it's important for us to know the names of God because it allows us to understand 
the unique characteristics and the unique aspects of God, uh, particularly uh, as it pertains to our lives as Christians. In other words, um, again, it is a side effect, so to speak, of living in this world that the enemy, Satan himself, who's the prince of the air, numbs our spiritual sensitivity to the greatness and the power of God. And as a result of that, our exercise should be daily to recognize through his through prayer, through praise, through worship, and through the study of his word, and through service of God so that we can be sensitized with, to who God is and what he's capable of doing. Um, many of us, we believe that God is all-powerful. We believe that. We would know it without a doubt. But then sometimes as a result of situations, um, we're numb and we forget that God is all that we need. And so in knowing and and, and and understanding the names of God, as the Old Testament patriarchs did, uh, they had an expectation of God's possibility and potential in their lives that they were able to do magnificent and great things simply because of the fact that they were uh, aware of God's possibilities and potential. And that's what I want us to in to download into our spirits during this season. Uh, to be, and it's all about expectation. This is called the expectation moment. And the more we know about God, the more we know about um, who God is and what and, and his characteristics and the aspects of his characteristics in our life, the better able we are to be able to experience the peace, the joy that God has for us, the better we're able to walk with him, the better we are able to know him. Um, that's knowing God opens the door. I think um, first, second Peter said it best, second Peter chapter one, it, God says, you know me, in, in me, you have all the all that it takes to live to live and have godliness. And so, the more we know about God, the better it is. So, I want us to understand we're not just going through these names of God just for quiz or just for you know trivia. We're going through this so that we will be, be more aware of the aspects of God, so that we in, in the character of God, so that we can be more have more expectations. With everything we face, sometimes we think, and I think this is just the, the, the side effect of living this world. We think that God is just, he's just, he hears for us, he can do certain things. God is way more than that. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient and omnipresent. Sometimes we, he's a healer. We believe that, but he's more than that. He is our banner. He is the source of our strength that we know that he'll bring us through, but he's more than that. And so that's why we're going through these names of God so that we will have a full understanding. And in doing so, we will find ourselves growing more and more um and more and more in him. So let's let's kick off tonight by saying in, in chapter seventeen of the book of Genesis. Turn it to chapter seventeen, book of Genesis. If you would, and we'll get started tonight. But, uh, uh, as we get to chapter seventeen Genesis, um we begin to see um, that this begins the life of, of the, the continues rather the life of of, of of Abraham. Abraham had been Abraham, Abram, beginning in verse twelve. Um, and during this time, we recognize that God told Abram, "To listen, Abram, I want you to leave Haran, and I, I want you to go to the place I'm going to send you." That's what chapter twelve lets us know. And now that this God now reveals Himself, I find it interesting. That, that, that Abraham, or Abram initially, left his home, like his homeland, his family, his friends, everything he knew based upon the work that something God told him. Think about that for a second. It wasn't written in on some tablets, it was on some stone tablets. God just said, go, and he went. And he went, and, and for 24 years, because he left, uh, Haram in chapter 12, he was 75. Here in chapter 17, we'll see he's now 99. So for 24 years, he had been walking on this journey that God had put him on. That's right, so where we are. And so chapter 1, after these 24 years, now God makes an appearance to him. He heard God, but now God says, let me show you something. Let me show you who I am. So look at chapter 17, verse 1. The Bible says that when Abram was 90 years, 99, was 90 years old, and nine, so he was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram. And when the Lord appeared to Abram, he said unto him, I am the almighty God. And I'm going to try my very best to ease through this because this is a, this, this, this lesson right here, I think should transform our way of thinking and, and make it fresh and make it new. 
and make it uh, and make give us a place in time where we can really be be uh, understand and have a more powerful life. God said, "I am the Lord. I am the Almighty God." That's what He says. I am the Almighty God. Now. That, that definition, I've done some work on this, and I really had a good time working on this, i got to tell you, I've studied for this. And so I, I'm going to try to uh, – I want you to get as much as you can get out of this. But I, I've had a good time, but I want you all to have a good time like I did. El Shaddai is the Hebrew word that God used to describe himself. I am the almighty God. El Shaddai. El always means God. In the Old Testament, in Hebrew, the word El means God. And any word that's connected to El – goes on to describe, and we'll see some more in the next coming days, it goes on to describe um, the attributes and the aspects of God. And so in this case, the word was used El Shaddai, which comes from two different words, Shad, which means breath, and also to do, which means a mountain or uh, um, or uh, something that's strong, a mountain that suggests strength and power. So what we see there, we put these two words together, is God is saying, I am the Lord, I am God. And I am God who is strong and who is mighty, but at the same time who will supply all your needs. That's what it means. That concept of breath gives you the picture of breast, rather, gives you the picture of a mother uh, providing nourishment for their children. So here's what God is saying to us. And I wrote these things out a lot as I was reading reading and, and thinking about things. And I, I got, I very rather read this. I, want you, I don't want you to miss this. I am, I am God. I am God um, all sufficient. I am all that you need. That's what God is telling Abraham. I am all that you need. I am strong enough um, because I'm so strong I can overpower anything. But God says, I am still all you need. God says, I am your avenger if somebody bothers you. But God says, I'm also your benefactor as you stand in need. That's what God is saying. I am all that you need. He said, I I can completely nourish you. I can completely satisfy you. I can completely supply all your needs. God says, I am. I have everything. I like this. I was thinking about this. I was praying about this. God says, I have everything, and I need nothing. And, and as I thought about that, I, I want to describe it like this. How many of us, somebody said, you need a thing? And you said, no, I don't need a thing. And you, you kind of need something else, but you say, I can probably do without it. God says, that's not my problem. God says, I have everything, and I don't need nothing from nobody else because I'm all sufficient. And he says, that not only am I all sufficient, I will freely. This is, what, this is what God is saying to Abraham when he says, I am El Shaddai. He says, I will freely give you every nourishment and every blessing you need, and I will sustain you by my power alone. I could stop right there and close this computer and walk away. What? God is all that we need. There are times in our lives where we are, we are wondering and worried and frustrated and confused and disappointed and disconnected because of what's going on around us, and let me be further pastoral, because of somebody. Somebody has done or not done something they said we're going to do, and we find ourselves burdened with disappointment. It may be a, a parent or a, a spouse or a cousin or a friend or a coworker, somebody that this wasn't that for us. But what God was trying to tell Abraham and what God is trying to tell us is that he is all that we need. He is all that we need in this world because God is telling Abraham, God, Abraham, I told you, and you don't need nothing else. I, he, he said, I can look back over these last 24 years and say there were times when you thought you needed to help me out uh, in the situation with, with, with Haggai, with this, with this man. God says, you need to help me because when I say it, I can bring it to pass. And that's what I want us to understand about God. God, when he says it, he brings it to Past. There is, in fact, no way around it that God is all that we need. Now, if we stop now, we should celebrate. But the beauty of this chapter is in this chapter 17, God kicks it off by telling Abraham, I am the almighty God. I am El Shaddai. I, am, I'm all, I have all power. I have so much power. I overpower everything. I am your sustainer. I am your benefactor. I am your avenger. I am, I am, um, will nourish you and satisfy you and completely supply your needs. But he doesn't stop there because God wasn't just making a statement. He was initiating a covenant. He told Abraham, I am the Lord, all, I'm the Almighty God. He says, and now, walk before me. I have been reading the Bible since I was, I'm talking about regularly, probably since I was. I remember my first Brown Bible. I think I bought that when I was 11. But I've been at church before that. Ms. Dozen, some other of you know that. I, I have literally 
this this verse blew me away as I studied it because God tells Abram, or now he's come out and telling the name Abraham, he tells him, I am all that you need, walk before me. Now, if you think about it and remember, God walked, walk, I mean, Enoch walked with God, which was beautiful because in that, there was a communion between God and Enoch. But God is telling Abraham, no, I want you to walk before me. I'm going to, I'm going to, I want you to feel the presence of me behind you, over you, and not as an oppressive way, but in a way that let him know that God had his back. I, can we see this right here? God is telling us the same thing he's telling Abraham. I am all that you need. And because I'm all that you need, I want you to walk before me so that I can have full coverage or surveillance. If you look at, and I'm just using this for the day to press it, he always has secret service. And then some of them are front, but the bulk of the civil service, secret service rather, are behind as if to be able to respond to whatever happens. They are looking constantly, digitally looking around to try to see what they can see, and they're ready to move to protect the president. But let me say this right here. There's not one secret service agent that has the vision of God, the power of God, the insight, the influence, omnipotent, omniscience, and omnipresent of God. So what God is saying is, walk before me, I've got you covered. I've got you covered. I'm, walk, I'm watching over you. If something coming, I'm ready to move on. it. And God tells Abram that and tells us that because he wants us to know exactly where we stand with him. God says, I want you to go before me. Now, the second part of that is, God says, I want you to go before me. So that that will cause you to be able to walk a different walk. Now, let me be very clear. This is not about God oppressing his presence, oppressing us. It's his presence liberating us. God says, walk before me so that you know I've got you covered. But God moves on here. Let me just go a little bit further. He says, walk before me and be thou perfect. God says, be perfect in your walk. Now, remember, perfect for us is an ongoing process. In other words, it is a purpose, it is a, is a process in which we walk recognizing our frailties, but also recognizing the righteousness and the power of God who we're walking before and who is watching over us. And so God is saying, think about it for a second. If, as, as, think about this practically. God says, walk before me. As we walk before God, it causes us, it should cause us to be aware of the fact that God is with us and should motivate us to walk a walk that pleases to God. Who doesn't want to please God? Who doesn't want God to smile on us? Who doesn't want that? We all want that. Let me put it another way. Um, when I was a kid, and I learned this when I had kids, when when mom and dad were watching, I actually I, I walked differently. I was I was better. All of us, everybody got kids. Everybody ever been a kid understand that concept. When your parents about you know somebody said was um this is so and so your your kid's out of control and um your kid is out of control at um at at school. Well, let me come up there and check them out. Well, no sooner than the kid gets there, guess what happens? Everything is different. The person does a whole different, the child, the child does a whole different, whole different action. The child does a whole, does differently. Why? Because mom and dad is there. That, and it's not because that mom and dad are depressing them. They just want to please mama and daddy. That's what God is telling us he wants us to do. He wants us to know that he's all we need and we should walk perfect before him, but not just for the purpose of, of him constantly correcting us, God says, I want to give you something, but in order for me to give it to you, I need you to know I'm, I'm, I'm watching over you and got you covered, but I also want you to walk a walk that's pleasing to me so that, here's what God is saying, so that you can get what it is that I have for you. If you just let me read a few more verses, I'm not going to hold y'all, and I, I promise I won't. Um, he says, I will make my covenant between me and thee. It will multiply thee exceedingly. God says, Abraham, or Abram, I want very much to give you um, a multiply the exceedance. That's what I want for you, Abraham. I want this for you, Abraham. I want a covenant with you, a relationship. God is saying, I want to initiate a covenant with you. God, who made the whole earth, says, Abraham, I want to initiate a covenant with you. And 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 I, and I want to bless you exceedingly. I want to multiply you exceedingly. I want you, I want what comes out of you to be so great that you can't even imagine it. And, and, and it's interesting that God makes the relationship, we have a covenant relationship with God through Jesus Christ. God simply has given us a Savior, and as we accept him, here's what the Bible says. i gotta, I got to say it again. Jesus said this, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the covenant, that we believe that Jesus died for us and God raised him from the dead. As Romans says, we have a covenant. We are in covenant with God. We didn't initiate it. Remember this, Romans said this, we didn't call on a Savior. 
God gave us the saving Jesus, and all he required of us, straightforward. Now, when I say simply, I mean straightforward. God didn't require us to jump through hoops. He simply said, believe that my son, Jesus, who I sent, is, 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 is my son, and that he died for your sins, and you shall be saved. This covenant relationship opens the door for us to experience all that God has. What? He said, Abraham, I want you to multiply these seeds. I want you to be fruitful. God wants us to be fruitful. But we, in order for us to experience it, we must understand that God is our El Shaddai, that God is our everything, that he is our sustainer. See, the more you are aware of God's presence all around us, the less likely we are to have a dependence on anything else. This is the tragedy of the people of, of, of Israel as they marched and walked through the world. What was the tragedy? The tragedy was that they thought that they needed and needed to make union of bonds and cover with other people, not realizing that the God of the universe who had chosen them was all they need. And the tragedy sometimes is allowed the children of God is that we sometimes feel like we need something or somebody else. God is saying you don't. All you need is me and walk before me. Let me take care of you. Let me provide for you. Let me sustain you. Walk before me so that you can be perfect, that you can be constantly under the process of me perfecting you. And in doing so, God says, I will multiply you. I will do great things in your life. Many of us miss out on the great things that God is trying to do for us because we find ourselves focused on something or somebody else. God later in the same chapter, so Abraham, listen, Abraham, let me go ahead and tell you, I got this covenant. I'm changing your name from Abraham to Abraham. And he said, now, I'm changing Sarah's name, your wife, from Sariah to Sarah. I'm doing that too. But not only am I doing that, Abraham, I'm going to make a nation out of you. I, you and your wife, you're 99 and she's about 10 years younger. I'm going to let you all have some children. And in that, you will be the father of a nation through the son that you have, who God says, by the way, you're going to name him Isaac. God says, hey, his name will be Isaac. You're going to name him Isaac because I said so, because I'm giving to you. Take Isaac will be. You name him Isaac, and I'm going to make him, I covenant with him, and I, through him, I'm going to make a whole nation of people. I want us to understand that God wants to do something. And that, and that was a miracle. That was a miracle. miracle. Sarah having a baby that old was a miracle. Abraham having a, miracle, having a baby that old, that was a miracle. God says, I'm going to do some powerful things in your life. I'm going to do some miracles in your life. I want to open some doors in your life. I want to, and it's not about age. It's not about um, length of service. You know, being a Christian is not about your length of service. It's just about your willingness to commit and submit to the Lord. God says, I want to do. So somebody can say, well, I haven't been a Christian long enough. Well, I've been a Christian this long and nothing happened. God says, just if you if you can get out of self and know that I'm El Shaddai, all you need. If you can get out of self and walk before me and make that a focus of your life. If you can get out of yourself, God says, I want to do some great things in your life. As St. Peter, let me pause and as I close tonight, as we have walked before God for 200 days, let us know that God is ready to do something miraculous and powerful that somebody said couldn't be done in our, in our fam church family and in our individual lives, our households, as we continue to walk with him. Let us be encouraged that we uh, uh, may have a mayor, may have a governor, may have a city councilor, may have a president, but that ain't nothing compared to who we got. El Shaddai is our Lord God Almighty. He is the Almighty God. And guess what? We belong to him. And all we need to do to experience all of his miraculous power, overcoming power, overwhelming power, nurturing power, sustaining power, satisfaction that only he can give is to walk before him. That's what we're doing. We're walking before him. Coming about for every night, that's walking before the Lord. Studying his word, that's walking before the Lord. Praying, that's walking before the Lord. Having your own personal devotion, that's walking before the Lord. Praising him any time and all the time about anything, that's walking before the Lord. Worshiping him and saying, God, you are magnificent, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, that's walking before the Lord. And as we do that, God is going to release and unleash and let us experience his nourishment, his satisfaction, his power, and most of all, his presence in every aspect of our lives. Let us remember. And let us say as I say sometimes, El Shaddai, God is all I need. He is the Lord God Almighty. He is the Lord God that is all sufficient, and he is totally sufficient for all that I need. Let us stop tonight. I want to just tell you thank you again. I want to give a special shout-out tonight. Deacon Jordan's brother, who is coming in live from Chicago, 
So God has allowed us to go from Chicago all the way down to Florida, and I'm grateful that the Lord has allowed us to expand our territory. Look at this. God took a time when we were supposed to be uh, contracted, and he's expanded what he is doing through us. How about that? How about that's what God has done? And I want somebody to know God is going to do it, and if he hadn't already done it, he's going to do it in our, each of our lives. He's going to take the time we're supposed to be shrunk and expand our territory. I love each of you, and I thank God for all of you. And I pray that God would just continue to bless us in an overwhelming way. And I pray that we continue to serve him in a way that we've never served him before. We'd be all elevated in our love for the Lord. I love you, and I sure thank all of you for joining us tonight. And I encourage each of us to continue to to be a part of this as long as God ordains. I'm not going to stop now until God says otherwise. So um, we are just going to continue in this word, and we're going to continue to do what God has called us to do. Let us close tonight in prayer. Um, Father God, in the name that is above all names, in the name of Jesus, in the only name by which man may be saved, Jesus, in the, in the name of, of, of him who lives, who died and lives forevermore, in the name of Jesus, our Savior, the lily of the valley and the bright morning star. God, we come tonight to say thank you that you have given us 200 days of walking with you nightly. God, we didn't know that we needed, didn't know we could do it. But, Lord, you, by your power, have provided all the, everything we needed to be a part of this. And I'm praying, God, for every believer that is on this phone line now and has ever been on it, and everybody who's on the Zoom line now who has ever been on it. God, I'm praying that you would just pour out multitudes of blessings upon all of us, that as we, you pour out these blessings, our lives will be changed and transformed even as we walk with you, that burdens will be relieved, that things we're worried about will be taken care of, that your overwhelming power will transform our lives into a whole another place, that we will become full of the joy that comes with knowing you, that we will be overwhelmed by the peace that comes with a relationship with you. I pray, God, that you do mighty, mighty things, Lord, that you will do mighty things, Lord, that will change our lives. I pray, God, and I thank you for our visitors tonight. Our guest tonight, Lord, but Deacon Joyce's brother, I thank you for uh, Sister Simpson's sister Joyce from Michigan is on here tonight. I thank you, Lord, for those who just checked in with us tonight to join us. And any others that I'm not aware of, I thank you for them, Lord. And I pray that you bless them, their household, and even the congregations they are part of. They will be blessed, Lord, by what they have done tonight by joining in in this moment with you. God, help us to all live in expectation. Help us to be aware of who you are. And who we are to you. Let it be so, Lord. I pray that you would bless households and families in each individual tonight. And I pray, God, that your word would get in our ears, that we would hear it all the time. Let your word get in our feet, that we can walk in your word. Let your word get in our hearts, that we may be strengthened beyond all measure. Let your word get in our minds so that it will guard our minds. And instead of being frustrated, we'll be fascinated by watching what you are doing in our lives and in this world. Let your word get in our mouths, on our lips, our tongue, our vocal cords, our lungs, all that it takes, Lord, to declare your word to a dying world, to declare your word with, to each other in encouragement and declare your word to ourselves that we may continue to walk with you. God, help us to walk before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, St. Peter. I love y'all, Amen. 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 Love you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Love you, Pastor. Love you.